Greetings, dear friends. Welcome to our circle. We continue our work coming together to bring our hearts and minds focusing on the common good. And in the cycle of Ergo, we bring our focus to the topic of right relationships with the Deva Kingdom. We focus on this topic as a part of the wider theme that we hold in our focus during the cycles of mutable science, with the focus on harmonization and right relationships, establishing the measure of peace. Thank you for joining and being together as one group. Over to you, Rebecca. So as we begin, we remind ourselves of our purpose in this project, the meditation for the common good which is to support the manifestation of the spiritual plan for our planet by focusing our group intention for the common good, by bringing spiritual laws and principles to life, and by magnetizing spirit-saturated thought forms of solution for practical action in the world. So we align now with the sign of Virgo as she shields and nurtures the spark of life within the form. And we bring our individual notes together through alignment and meditation into one harmonious sound within the vibrant womb of silence as we seek to magnetize and energize thought forms and states of being which will support the growth of respectful creative relationships between the human and angelic and deva kingdoms as we draw together around this intention i hand over to tracy who will uh, lead us in the naming circle. Over to you, Tracy. Thank you, Rebecca. As we begin our focus today in this new moon meditation, the naming circle unites our hearts across distance as we begin our alignment and bring ourselves fully into our group work by uniting our hearts in this way, we begin naturally to work telepathically through our group mind. The key to this telepathic work is in the etheric alignment, which creates the group field and allows it to become both a receiving and transmitting agent for higher ideas and energies. We will begin by calling our names into the circle, starting with our organizers and the Action Area group members. As your name is called, please unmute yourself, say your name, and where you are calling in from. For example, Tracy Arbor calling in from Novi, Michigan, USA. And as we go through this, let us turn our attention to our hearts and the heart center of the group gathered today as each one of us calls ourself into this circle. Rebecca. Hello, everyone. 
It's Rebecca from the Sunshine Coast in Australia on the East Coast. Welcome. Alexander. Alexander, connecting today from Des Moines in Iowa, United States. Welcome. Margo. Hello, everyone. This is Margo calling in from Victoria, BC, on the southern tip of Vancouver Island off the west coast of Canada. Welcome. Catherine. Hello, this is Catherine calling in from Northfield, Minnesota, near the Twin Cities of St. Paul and Minneapolis. Welcome. Andrea. Hello, everyone. This is Andrea Ross, and I am calling from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in the northeast part of the United States. Welcome. Maria. Hello, all. This is Maria calling in from New York State, United States. Welcome. Daniela. Greetings, everyone. I'm calling in from Robin, a beautiful city in Croatia, Adriatic coast. Welcome. Anna. Hello. I, I, I'm calling from United Kingdom, Southeast and Western Augustine launch Christianity to this part of the world from Rome. Thank you. Welcome. Aneta. In Mark. Welcome. Avon. Avon Madison from the San Francisco Eco Bay Area, United States. Welcome. Bart. Hello, everyone. Bart from Mid State, New York, <clears throat> joining the group. Welcome. Bernard. Hello everyone, uh, Bernard from uh, near Strasbourg, France. Welcome. Danielle. Danielle, please unmute yourself. Welcome, Danielle. Darcy. Darcy, can you sign with yourself? We see Darcy's hands up, so maybe she's not able to unmute. Correct. Welcome, Darcy. Fred. This is Fred in Deerfield Beach, Florida, sending everyone blessings and good wishes. Welcome. Frida. Frida, please unmute.
Welcome, Frida. Jillian. Hello, everyone. Jillian from East Anglia, UK. Welcome. Helen. Hello, this is Helen from also from the UK near London. Welcome. Isha. Hello, Isha Strasser, New Jersey, United States. Welcome. Jan. Welcome, Jan. Josette. Hello, I am Josette. I live uh, close to Strasbourg in French. Welcome. Kim. Kim sent a message that she cannot speak today, but she's joining us from Queenstown in New Zealand. Welcome. Long. Welcome, Lone. Lynn. I'm Lynn Green. I'm from Columbus, Ohio, in the USA, in the center of the country. Martin. Hello, everyone. This is Martin from Belgium, Wallonia. Welcome. Maureen. Welcome, Maureen. Nathaniel. Nathaniel Borgen, Minneapolis, Minnesota, USA. Welcome. Ruth. Hello, this is Ruth. I'm calling in from Corvallis, Oregon, on the West Coast. Thank you for being here. Welcome. Shirley. Good morning. This is Shirley calling in from Vancouver Island on the west coast of Canada. Welcome. Tina. Hello, this is Tina Hutchings from Denver, Colorado, USA. Welcome. Trisha. Hello, Trisha, Naples, Florida, USA. Welcome. Rebecca Frith. Welcome, Rebecca. Thank you, everyone. Now that we are linked together as a group, let us share a few moments in Thank you, everyone. Now that we are linked together as a group, let us share a few moments in silence to align, forming a triangle between Shambhala, the hierarchy, and humanity. 
May our efforts be of the highest vibration in selfless service for our purpose. Over to you, Rebecca. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, everyone. So today's action area group, um, I have the pleasure to introduce and they've been, um, they gathered at the full moon with other interested meditators to contemplate on our topic of the devas and our relationship with the devas at that time of the full moon when the higher influences and the presence of our elder brothers in the hierarchy is most available to us. And the impressions generated at that time have been held and brooded over and gathered together from all of you who may have joined us um, and um, continued to be brooded over um, in the intervening time between the full moon and the, the new moon. So this month, our action area group is made up of Margot, Catherine, Andrea, and Maria. And I'll hand over now to Margot, who will begin today's synthesis of impressions from the action area group. Over to you, Margot. Thank you, Rebecca. In Treatise on Cosmic Fire, pages 911 and 12, the Tibetan tells us that devas of all kinds and colors are found on the physical etheric levels, but the prevailing hue is violet. With the coming in of the ceremonial ray of violet, we have the amplification, therefore, of the violet vibration, always inherent on these levels, and the great opportunity, therefore, for contact between the two kingdoms. It is in the development of etheric vision which is a capacity of the physical human eye and not in clairvoyance, that this mutual apprehension will become possible. With the coming in likewise of this ray will arrive those who belong thereon with a natural gift of seeing etherically. Children will frequently be born who will see etherically as easily as the average human being sees physically, and as conditions of harmony gradually evolve out of the present world chaos, devas and human beings will meet as friends. In the kingdom of the gods, Jeffrey Hodson writes, the wheel revolves. The golden days return. Nature calls again to man who, as he hears, endeavors to respond. Yet, involved in increasing complexities, he has lost his contact with nature's hidden life. To regain it, all that dulls the senses, everything gross, everything impure, and all indulgence must be left behind. The divine heart of life 
must be approached in silent contemplation and single-mindedness. Thus, only may that heart be found. Over to you, Catherine. Thank you, Margot. I was led to read from Letters on Occult Meditation, pages 173 to 184, where we learn that we are cooperating with David Builders to restore the plan. We're becoming aware of the David kingdoms as creating the intelligent activity that is present within all forms. Something deeper and more sustaining than even the beauty that first attracts us. Both humans and devas see the need to communicate to restore unity and the plan. So we've come to this time where we're waking up to the possibility of cooperating with David Builders. And as I'm sure many of you have read, we've been cautioned not to contact the elementals, but part of the subhuman involutionary units until we are first linked to higher devas through purity and nobility of soul. In the next 500 years, we will cooperate with the higher devas, especially under the incoming seventh ray. Next slide. What would right relationship and cooperation begin to feel like? What have we sensed already? DK tells us to seek contact with the devas through love and longing. Be available, sensitive. We know that devas communication seems paradoxically opposite of us as humans. They don't understand speech as we know it, but impulses, forces, and vibrations that are set up through forms. And so not knowing their language and respecting their power and importance, we can only approach this relationship with great humility and respect for their necessary contribution and how little we might understand them. The devas are not summoned, but they will attend our ceremonies as they recognize the power in them. What might be the gifts of each kingdom? DK tells us humans can offer strength, the objective point of view, and the fifth principle of manas. The devas are the custodians of joy, magnetism, and vitality. A seed thought 
which I will use part of in the meditation. From page 179. Know the secret of being not but a channel and abide still in the secret place. Over to you, Andrea. Deva. Our oldest unknown friends, our unseen companions, closer than breath, thriving on our imaginations and delighting in our astonishment of the beauty that they build and manifest. They delight in our joy. A kingdom as marvelously infinite and diverse as all of the other kingdoms on earth. We give them imagined human forms from the tiniest sprite to the mighty seraphim. But they are as different from the human race as the towering cloud or the crystalline violet of the amethyst that they assemble. Yet they are the twin sibling of mankind. Invisibly visible, their brilliant etheric presence is in and of everything we sense and experience, bringing intelligent light into the thought form that is imagined in the dark of the cave, enabling it to be witnessed. Jacqueline Lane says, wherever there is purpose, Deva gather to carry it out. Everything is alive with their intelligent presence the heady fragrance of roses, the shrill note of a blue jay, the sharp sting of a honeybee, the warm sweetness in a honeysuckle, the explosion of color in the sunset, the heartbreaking grief of loss. The Tibetan tells us in Initiation, Human and Solar, page 202, the army of the voice, the devas in their serried ranks work ceaselessly. Let the disciple apply himself to the consideration of their methods. Let him learn the rules whereby that army works within the veils of Maya. If you are patient, as still as a moonbeam, with a heart pure as grace and teeming with loving, grateful joy, you may be gifted with the sense of their shimmering presence. Deva draw near with magnetic rapport in our halcyon moments of quietude. When we open our hearts with hierarchical love and transparency and with beholden astonishment perceive their deeds, they reach out to us. Without them, we might be, but would have no experience of our being. A poem by Mary Oliver. When I am among the trees, especially the willows and the honey locust, equally the beech, the oaks and the pines. They give off such hints of gladness. I would almost say that they save me and daily. I am so distant from the hope of myself in which I have goodness and discernment and never hurry through the world, but walk slowly 
and bow often. Around me, the trees stir in their leaves and call out, stay a while. The light flows from their branches. And they call again, it's simple, they say. And you too have come into the world to do this, to go easy, to be filled with light and to shine. Maria. Thank you, Andrea. Hello. As we consider our Virgo new moon alignment and keynote, I am the mother and the child. I, God, I matter, am. We can turn to the book by disciple Geoffrey Hudson, Kingdom of the Gods, with the illustrations by Ethelwyn M. Quayle. This illustration is portrayed the divine world mother who along with her angelic hosts oversees and nurtures and protects all new life here to read into our group field of thought are some quotes from kingdom of the gods on the world mother the teachings of occult philosophy relate this being to the feminine or the mother aspect of deity of which she is a manifestation and a representative. Matter itself, universal or prakti, is the womb wherein all worlds gestate, from which all are born and to which all return. All nations have recognized, honored, and worshiped this maternal principle in nature all their exoteric religions have personified this goddess an archangel mother of universes races nations and men the planetary world mother is also thought of as an adept official in the inner government of the world in whom all the highest qualities of womanhood and motherhood shine forth in their fullest perfection this illustration symbolically portrays her in her solar aspect, brooding in divine love over all worlds. In our last webinar on how can we better create our relationship to the David kingdoms, there was a need for listening through compassion, through the heart. The Tibetan gives us this passage from Raising the Initiations, The Listening Pilgrim. Listen, O pilgrim, to the chanting of the word by the great Deva Lords. Hush all earth vibration. Still the restless strivings of lower mind and with ear intent, hark to the sounds that rise to the throne of the Logos. Only the pure in heart can hear. Only the gentle can respond. The stormy sounds of all earth struggle. The shrill vibration of the watery sphere. The crashing note marking the place of thought dims the sound and shuts out the tone. He who is silent, quiet, and calm within who sees all by means of light divine and is not led by light reflected within the threefold spheres is he who will shortly hear. From out the environing ether will strike a note upon his ear, unlike the tones that sound within the world terrestrial. Listen, O pilgrim, for when that sound strikes in colorful vibration upon the inner sense, know that a point has been achieved marking a great transition watch then o pilgrim for the coming of that hour with purified endeavor 
mount nearer to that sound. Know when its tone steals through the misty dawn or in the mellow sunlight, strikes soft upon the ear that soon the inner hearing will become expanded feeling and will give place to sight and perfect comprehension. Know when the music of the spheres comes to you note by note in misty dawn or sunny noon, at cool of eve or sounding through the deep of night, that in their rhythmic tone lies secret revelation. Back to you, Andrea. As we join today in meditation, let us come together in joy. Hear the color and see the sound emanating from each of our hearts and watch as they interface to create a united group heart, radiant with divine love. Let us breathe from our heart. We gather today in the dawning light of Virgo. The Tibetan tells us in Esoteric Astrology, page 254, Virgo symbolizes depths, darkness, quiet, and warmth. It is the valley of deep experience wherein secrets are discovered and eventually brought to light. Virgo, the feminine, possessor of the womb. And with this thought, let us invoke the unconditionally loving presence of the Divine Mother into our group soul. We sense the Mother of the Earth nurturing the soul of our group so that we may stand with her as midwives, serving the gestational energy growing within the soul of humanity. With the rising of Virgo, we prepare feeling the quickening of the inner Christ light that grows within the form of our being. Aligned with hierarchy and with the feminine vitality of the Deva kingdom, we swell as we invoke the purity perfection and beauty into the restoration of the plan. Virgo showers us with rays of love, wisdom and devotion that illuminate the Deva dance, joining matter and spirit and the light expands within all of us. We are the womb that holds the magnificence 
of the divine plan. We labor in our service with commitment and in joyful anticipation of the delivery of the one new consciousness. The united civilization of all of the kingdoms on earth that will be birthed with radiant beauty and harmony. I am the mother and the child. I, God, I, Matter am. With reverence, gratitude, and solidarity, we invite the Deva Kingdom and especially those who oversee the purpose within the new moon of Virgo to surround our chalice with their love, light, and joy. Let us enter the silence of their presence, the quietude of their workshop, and with purpose, fill our chalice with impressions of our alliance as we serve the needs of humanity and focus on the potency of the seed thoughts. Margo. In divine law and order, we approach the David kingdom with humility and reverence in silent contemplation and standing thus, listen.
Catherine. And as we stand, abide still in the secret place. Andrea. With a joyfully grateful heart, we invite Deva into our awareness. Maria. We contemplate our group purpose. How can we achieve right relationship with the Davic kingdom? And how does this relationship benefit humanity and all the kingdoms?
In closing our meditation, let us go forth in love. Thank you, Andrea, and everyone. As we draw together the threads of subtle beautiful energy from our work together. Let us bring to earth and distribute our work through the sounding of the great invocation. From the point of light, within the mind of God. Let light stream forth into human minds. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God. Let love stream forth into human hearts. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide all little human wills. The purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call humanity, let the plan of love and light work out. And may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth.
And let's just gently and quietly take a moment to bring ourselves back. Sensing ourselves again. Coming into recognition of the group. And bringing back with us any impressions that we can bring to form and hold and share together in the next session section of the webinar. And as always, we do have the Community Impressions board available for you to share impressions in writing this month if you would like to. And Alexander will post the link for that in the chat. And you're welcome to type in there now if you would like to or save the link and type in there later. And we'll um, now open up for sharing of impressions. So if you have impressions you would like to share, please um, raise your hand and Alexander will unmute you so that you can share. And I should also say that um, you're welcome to type into the chat your impressions um, so that everyone can see them if you would like to do that as well. Um, but we'd love to hear from you if you can find your voices. I see that um, Lynn, you had your hand up. Where are you? Are you able to unmute yourself, Lynn? Um, yes, thank you. Um, hello, and thanks for the opportunity to um, share the ideas. I've been thinking about this subject. It's a favorite of mine for a while now and um, have some ideas that I'll enjoy sharing, uh, even though I couldn't take part in the other uh, pre-planning part of this. Um, the first thing I thought of was uh, love is connection. Um, since we're, we're talking of connecting with the Davis and, and it's such a big topic anyway. Um, and I thought about our progression from Leo to Virgo and then um, in the future to Libra as the uh, 
Leo is the fulfilled personality expression, and Virgo, where we are now, is the birth, birth of the Christ or the soul consciousness. And then um, next we'll come to Libra as uh, the balance of the lower self and higher self, I believe. Um, and um, as far as divas are concerned, um, I think maybe um, one role that humanity could play would be as a focalizer, as um, um, our meditation group um, talks about. <clears throat> maybe we could be a focalizer for the devas. Um, also, um, I think of, um, I read in Esoteric Astrology, actually, um, Virgo symbolizes the whole goal of the evolutionary process, which is to shield, nurture, and finally reveal hidden spiritual reality or the soul. And humanity makes tangible and objective that for which the whole creative process was intended. And of course, the devas function in all of our bodies, higher and lower. So that seemed, seemed very important. Um, so when I was thinking about this and, um, they, and um, Virgo is representing the mother principle, um, I thought of using different sources, um, dealing with our different levels of uh, being. Um, and uh, the esoteric level, and then I, so I checked uh, with, uh, with my Bailey books, Esoteric Astrology, and then also the meter book in Shine Forth. Um, let me see if I can find that. Um, William Meter um, gives us uh, information about contacting the Davis. And he says that um, in order to really create um, persistent forms in matter, that we have to be working from the soul level. Uh, and to do that, we need, uh, according to him, we need some detachment from the ideas we're, we're creating. And we need to be trying to put in form the highest possible truth um, to bring forth right relationship between the el elementals, which brings, creates a geometrically beautiful creation which can last. We have to earn the loyalty of the elementals um, through work by working through the soul in order to get them to actually leave their higher deva lords to uh, um, give their loyalty to uh, our creation rather than to the creations of the higher deva lords. Uh, so we're talking about creating persistent forms. I guess we all create forms constantly in that are not lasting. Um, whether we like it or not. And um, so I thought that was an interesting perspective. Um, also, I looked to uh, a book called Paralandra, which describes a garden in Virginia in the USA. And they've been trying, much like Findhorn, they've been trying to communicate with the Davis. Um, while they garden. Um, they actually um, check with the devas with almost every choice they make. They try to connect with the devas. Um, and they uh, have some interesting things to say. I can just find where I put it. Okay, they say that nature is love in action. That's what the Davis tell them. Um, also, uh, 
they say that um, they are very willing and want to work with, at this time, work with, with humanity. Um, and they say that human cooperative participation empowers their work. And when man takes responsibility as a co-creator, the evolutionary flow of nature responds. They also say that change is made uh, in, na in nature through pure will and desire of, of the humans. Disregarding the deva dynamic is called manipulation and results in weakening imbalance, which become part of the ecological disaster that we currently face. So uh, they would really welcome our participation um, in healing the earth and in actually in the um, in the uh, bringing in of the new age. They work also in bringing in of the new age um, and they the change from Pisces to Aquarius. Um, and they they in this book they talk about it being a change from um, a parent child partly a change from the parent child relationship to a change of equal participation and cooperation. Um, then then finally, um, I looked at um, I'm a student of permaculture, and I thought I I really believe many of the permaculture principles are mirroring esoteric principles. So I looked into that a bit. And um, I believe that some of these principles, principles show the manifestation of these spiritual principles. Um, and they, uh, um, permaculture is about a way of life that deals with uh, farming and gardening, but also with human social interactions. <clears throat> And some of their, okay, their, their motto is earth care, people care, fair share, which means pass on the surplus. Um, so uh, they, their one principle is that everything is connected to everything else. It's the connections that matter. Um, another principle, observe and replicate natural patterns. Again, turn problems into solutions because everything is a resource. resource. Every living thing has worth. Value diversity because diversity is stability. Yield is only limited by our available information and by our imaginations. Start small and develop the nucleus. Build working relationships between elements. Connect so that the needs of one element are filled by the yield of another. Another really interesting one, everything gardens. Everything gardens because everything creates conditions it needs. And they emphasize cooperation, not competition. Again, accept feedback, creativity, creatively use change, and that form follows function. So I think those all are um, related to spirituality and spiritual principles. Uh, finally, um, I read something in the Paralandra book that I thought was a beautiful visualization that's very short, but I think very, very interesting. I'll read that to you. The knower holds an egg to his heart, and the egg sprouts a root with two leaves. The fruit of this plant is the wing and shafted sun above its head. The knower shall plant this egg in the earth, and a new kingdom shall be grounded on earth. I thought that was especially beautiful. It's actually from a tarot card um, in the new tarot by John Cook and Rosalind Sharp. Thanks a lot for a chance to share. Thank you, Lynn. You're so welcome. And I see Bart has his hand raised. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Rebecca, I wanted to thank you for 
not you, just all of the panelists today for creating the atmosphere where I was able to actually feel a contact with the devas through the silence. Words are very difficult. And uh, such a beautiful um, connection, which if we could keep it alive, the uh, transformation and the crisis that we're facing on the earth might go much faster. Uh, the challenge of communication with the devas without words is sort of what I'm trying to express. The beauty, the joy, hear the color, see the sound. It's all there if we can just relate, uh, right relationship. And um, thank you for creating this atmosphere today, Margot, Catherine, Andrea, Maria, and Rebecca. It was beautiful. Thank you, Bart, and Shirley has her hand raised as well. Yes, um, I like to paint through the colour in my garden. And uh, the message I received today was nurture the soil. And it seems quite appropriate given that we've been talking a lot today about the soil and and about the David Kingdom's um, um, gee, I don't know the right word I want. The David Kingdom's um, cooperation in all of that. And um, I just wanted to add that. Thank you. Thank you, Shirley and Bart and Lynn. Um, as you say that, Shirley, I'm just feeling um, the idea of the soil as the ground of the spirit and um, the Davis as the communicators of the spirit into the soil and the formative forces. And it's so lovely to hear that um, there's been a sense of contact through what has come forth from the through the action area group today um, because that really is action um, when when that can happen I'm unmuting Katya who raised her hand here. Oh, hello everyone. It's just two, two impressions from the meditation. <clears throat> First is the very different uh, magnitude of a being that we call divas. It, very different. Sometimes I think enormous, vast, like a mountain range. You think that's the end, that's the highest mountain, and then you 
um, walk, walk, move up higher and you see the next one and the next one and sort of a, and amazing beings. And uh, when we connect with them, the understanding of that space that they hold, I think will be helpful. And, um, and uh, the second thing about the soil, I have a friend and a fellow co-worker um, in biodynamics, Brooke Levin, they, they started a movement long time ago. It's called Build Your Soil or Die. And uh, when I first heard that, I thought, well, it is some, some, somewhat fresh. But then the more I gave it like some thinking and uh, perception, I realized that it, it is true. There is only so much we can exploit something and take it out, then we need to put back in. And what um, biodynamic people, Steiner people, figured out that besides the nutrients and um, rituals, we also do need to put there our human intention. Because we so intentionally destroy things that when we rebuild, so we interfere in a such level that you know when we rebuild, our intention, human intention is very, is a key part of their rebuilding. So those are actually three things I wanted to share. Thank you. I also want to add to my impression while we are muted. It's the second time that this impression came. First one was during the full moon when we meditated on this topic. That gave us they also have group consciousness. And when we approach them as a group with the group consciousness, they're very responsive and they're ready to cooperate. And maybe even it's a certain evolutionary task for the new group of old servers to grow into that possibility and probably responsibility being in attunement with group consciousness of Devi Kingdom. Because probably only the world servers group has capacity at this time to stand on behalf of humanity, representing humanity in cooperation with the Gavik group consciousness. Thank you. Hello, this is Tina. I had an impression of dolphins and how they communicate with sonar and that devas communicate in the etheric world, perhaps through an etheric form of sonar, that attraction and repulsion of love and negative emotions would repel versus loving joyful actions would attract. And somehow 
it works as a sonar on the etheric plane for them and how they communicate with each other and possibly how we could communicate with them. Yes, drawing the Davis towards us through sound is also something that we've um, thought about and talked about across the month and the um, use of music and um, I think and also just wanting to mention the, the such important role of the Davis in the work of healing. Um, and I think it's probably time for us to call ourselves together to close our work here. Is that right, Alexander? Um, and do we have time to um, talk for a little while after this about um, topics for the next month or shall we be closing the webinar? Thank you, Rebecca. Um, I think we uh, just to continue our the rhythm of our group ritual. Uh, we we should have uh, extra time to put our minds together. What could be our topic for the next uh, month cycle? So I invite us those who can stay a little bit longer uh, to stay for another uh, ten minutes. But before we close this part of the webinar, I want to thank everyone. With this webinar, we come to the end of the 12 uh, cycles uh, meditating in this new format as we started putting our minds and hearts with a focus on the common good. Last year, uh, with the open forum, we generated ideas that allowed us uh, as a group to create this chalice that we experience today and this ritual I can say uh, so thank you very much for this and at the coming full moon we will uh, invite you to join the group sharing uh, on how this experience of working together with a focus on the common good been for this year and uh, projecting our intention forward. So look forward in your emails invitation for that group sharing. And uh, that will be sometimes during the full moon time. So much gratitude for this ongoing cyclic group work. Yes, and much gratitude to the group and for the way that the group, the Action Area group today has come together in a very natural and organic way. I think perhaps supported by the Davis. So um, let us just ritually close this meditation part of the webinar before we move into um, thinking about some ideas for what might be next topics. Um, and I just have a little um, piece expanded and adapted from Helmut von Kuglin, who um, was writing about education and angels in education. Um, this is not an exact quote, um, it's taken from his writing on the internet. 
So let us, with gratitude for the group heart, close our work. And let us make time for the angels to enter into our lives as we go forward. They wait for us to do this. It is not that magnificent revelations from the angels will appear to us in this time, but the, that the angels will see us. Let us prepare ourselves so that they can perceive us and we them. Let us make a place for them in our lives on behalf of all of humanity. Let us begin to build the rainbow bridge of light, colour and sound that will enable the crossing of loving communication between our kingdoms. Thank you, friends. And this is our last segment of this time together. We have like seven minutes, very short, but as I said, to fulfill the ritual, let's look together, focusing our minds and hearts into the next cycle. What could be our topic in this cycle of Libra, which is uh, under the Cardinal Cross, we consider the theme of leadership and governance or in other words cleaning the house of religion and politics so with this i just invite us to share brainstorm any ideas heart storm any uh, impressions and put them in the group channels and we will close in seven minutes thank you So um, please unmute yourself if you would like to speak or offer any ideas. I'll just start off by um, saying that an idea that's coming to me, um, <laughs> flowing out of this amazing um, meditation that we've just had is the idea of hidden governance. Um, and especially because the Davis um, govern and build our forms without us knowing about them and it's making me think of how um, spiritual force governs um, our evolution and the importance of us collaborating with that but um, perhaps that could be a focus of um, of the way the spiritual forces work um, to support governance or the unfoldment of of life in our our world the, the manifested life it, it's Bart here <clears throat> excuse me perhaps something to do with the archetypal patterns that um, all 
life and forms uh, follow and collect around. I don't know, it's quite a vast subject, but probably fascinating. But as you say that, um, it, it um, led me to um, the archetype of Libra and the um, symbol of the scales. Um, so there's much richness that we can gain from, from that idea of attuning to archetypes as um, leaders of our, our forming of things in the world. Indeed, Rebecca, the, the, each symbol for each uh, sign of the zodiac is an archetypal symbol, I think, with quite a history of development. And uh, Virgo and Leo used to be combined in the Sphinx, so, which is in itself an archetype. I would like to look a little bit at how we're going to recognize the uh, members of hierarchy or elders revealing themselves. And this idea of choosing our, our leaders or our governors from the light that they shine rather than the, the current slightly random, well, I, I suppose it's more based on money at the moment, isn't it? Who, who's got the money? But um, are, are, we, are we looking for this new governance and leadership? What, what are we looking for in people? Can we see that light shining? And some of the ideas that came up today about etheric vision and how we can strengthen that so we can see the, the truth of people and the people we can trust. Helen, that, that just popped something into my awareness, recalling how um, Jesus was really born in, into a community, in addition, of course, to very particular parents. And so then it's back on that idea of how are we as a group in the new group of world servers, how might we be... Uh, rebuilding the soil that would allow this new leadership to uh, grow and flourish.
I keep thinking about the communities that are being led. And I'm not sure I've got a specific point, but there's something about humanity and what humanity is is sinking in leadership. There's something about leadership and governance that keeps bringing me back down into the masses. And so some aspect of that I think is connected with this topic. I'll give it more thought, it's not coming. I agree with that. Um, I think um, in in some format, some way, we have to shift to um, cooperation and um, group um, group interaction rather than just um, individuals who will lead us through. I think it has to has to become more cooperative. Um, I don't know exactly what that will look like. But I, I can only see it in small communities right now. I can see it there. Um, I don't know what it would look like large scale. Well, we, I feel like we are just getting going and our seven minutes is, <laughs> is up. But um, we have the opportunity to, if anyone would like to contribute more to the topic development, um, please email us. We can um, send you an invitation to the um, quarter moon gathering of the custodians of purpose where we discuss this more. So um, the opportunity is there. Um, I see that Darcy is still here and um, Darcy placed a beautiful comment into um, the questions, um, which we don't really have much time for now and I can't get to it again. Um, but thank you, Darcy, for your presence and um, sorry that you couldn't unmute yourself in the naming circle. Um, and we will now close. Um, this section because some of us need to go to the vigil. So um, much gratitude to everyone for being here. And let's just take a minute of silence or a moment of silence um, as we disconnect and carry this work together forward beyond this webinar. Many, many thanks. Um, to all in attendance, including the Davis. <laughs>